I was basically in the fetal position shaking because I was scared. It was very scary, but like I was trying, like we were trying not to panic. We have the doors barricaded and that made me feel a lot safer. I'm not sending him back to this school. This this is ridiculous. There's too much going on too fast. It's just crazy because like people always say like it's never going to happen to them. And the fact that it happened to two people that I really care about, like it's just really hard. Well, just moments later, he took his last breath in the police car. And then we, um, you know, all right, we lost tape mirror. Home is where the heart is, even if our heart is breaking. And I know mine is broken right now. In Michigan, we have breaking news in the trial of 15-year-old Ethan Crumbly. Ethan Crumbly, through his defense, has announced a notice that they intend to pursue the insanity defense. What this means is it should trigger mental health examinations of Ethan Crumbly, and he is saying that he did not understand right from wrong at the time of the shooting. Crumbly, you may recall, is accused of a mass shooting at a Michigan high school. This happened on November 30th of 2021 at Hawk. Oxford High School, leaving four dead, seven injured. Of those seven, there were six students and one teacher. And the parents of the victims have now filed a new lawsuit, not only against the family of the Crumbleys, but also school staff. This is the one also in which the parents have been charged with crimes and negligence and intentional because they did purchase the gun for their son. And the allegations are they should have known that he would have done something bad. Still with us to help break all this down, trial attorney Loray Carruth. Loray, first of all, Ethan Crumbly, this is pretty significant major news from the storytelling perspective of what happens next. He plans to say insanity defense. I was insane at the time of the crime. What does that mean to you? So what that means to me is that he has a bit of a high you know, hurdle to climb. Um, and I say that because as an affirmative defense, he has to proactively show that um, as a result of whatever um, mental defect that he had or was claiming to had at that time, that is because of that, that he did not know or understand the wrongfulness of his actions. And so, and he has to do that by clear and convincing evidence. Um, and so it depends on, you know, what type of of evidence or records that he's going to show, but um, he does have um, a bit of a journey to show the, the, the court and, and the jury um, that it was in fact an insanity, that he was in fact, excuse me, um, insane at the time of, of the, the shooting. You know, a lot of chatter about this case and the fact that something must have been amiss because no one would just go into a school and shoot and kill like he did uh, such such widespread four killed, seven injured, that he must have some mental defect. But the reality is, touch on how you link, if you're trying this case, the mental defect, if you're the defense, with the affirmative defense of because of that mental defect, then he's allowed to plead the affirmative insanity defense under the law. So uh, it would depend on what the mental defect is. It could be schizophrenia, where he he could say, you know, um, the the voices that I saw coming out of their bodies, they told me to shoot them, or it could be a, a bipolar disorder, um, something where he says that the voices in his own head told him to to shoot them. There may have been instances of who knows of, of bullying. There's so many questions that I feel like have gone unanswered to this point, but I think that those answers, um, those questions will be answered at trial. And so the other part of this is we know there have been other, uh, Nicholas Cruz, another example, and he of a shooting, and he did not claim insanity. That was not one of the defenses that he put forward. And I will note that in the Ethan Crumbly case, part of the reason the defense said they claim that is that should trigger mental health exams. But why do you, what's a reason that you might think of, in your opinion, is a difference between Nicholas Cruz, who did not plead insanity or take that affirmative defense versus an Ethan Crumbly who has now filed a notice saying that is his defense. I think the difference could be there. I think the difference is their their history. Um, there there may be instances in in uh, Ethan Crumbly's history that can speak to to 
that can speak to a mental defect that just wasn't in um, Nicholas Cruz's his history. And so the defense is going to have to play that history up in order to um, successfully meet their uh, their burden for the defense. Yes. And, and now that they've done that again, if we're looking at what are the next steps, it should trigger mental health evaluations right. of Ethan Crumbly in order for the defense to determine, is it in fact something they can prove to the points that right. you just made? All right. You're going to stay with us. Coming up after the break, we're going to take a deeper dive into the Oxford school shooting case and discuss if an insanity defense is really a good idea for Ethan Crumbly. It's time for our daily calendar call to get you current on all the biggest cases across the nation. It's official. Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer formally announced his plans to retire today in a letter to President Biden. Breyer will step down at the end of the current term. The president has promised to fill his opening with the high court's first African-American female justice. In Nashville, Tennessee, jury selection is underway for the trial of a man who's accused of killing four people at a Waffle House in 2018. A member of the prosecution has reportedly tested positive for COVID-19. No word yet on if this will delay the opening statements, which are currently scheduled to begin this Monday. And in Michigan, a new lawsuit was filed today over the deadly Oxford High School shooting. The victim's parents say teachers, counselors, and the dean of students did not do enough to prevent the shooting and protect their children. And that's where we pick it up. We know that Ethan Crumbly is now planning an insanity defense. But does this help his parents who are being charged with four counts of involuntary manslaughter each for this crime? First, let's take a look back at their arraignment when the prosecutor, Karen McDonald, laid out the state's position against them. Your Honor, uh, we know from the facts and that were presented at the swear to that uh, the Crumbleys, Mr. Crumbly, purchased this weapon for his son um, and that on the 27th, the, the uh, Mrs. Crumbly went to the shooting range with her son, posted on social media saying that it was a mother Sunday and that she was um, she bought a weapon for her, a, a gun for her baby for Christmas. Uh, it, it's also clear from the facts that he had um, total access to this weapon and that it was it was for him. Uh, second, on the 29th, both defendants were aware that he was searching ammunition um, on his phone at school. Instead of um, reacting to that as a concerned parent and worried about safety, uh, Mrs. Crumbly texted, LOL, <clears throat> just I'm not mad just next time. Don't get caught. Um, and then, obviously, on this very tragic day, on the 30th, they were called to the school and about their uh, son's uh, um, drawing, which clearly depict, depicted threats and acts of violence. And instead of disclosing to the school that he had full access to this weapon, they chose not to. They chose not to take their son home. They chose not to tell anybody that he might be dangerous when it was clear and they had every likelihood that, that he was, and instead they left. Um, furthermore, after the active shooting announcement went out, Mrs. Crumbly texted her son, Ethan, don't, get, don't do it. And Mr. Crumbly went to his home purposely to search for this weapon because he was afraid his son had the weapon and was, in fact, shooting people and hurting them, which, as we know, is exactly what happened. We called the prosecutor's office throughout the day and never got a call back. We were going to make arrangements to have our clients turn themselves in. I was in a trial in circuit court in front of Judge Savin all day yesterday. Ms. Lehman was traveling on a plane from Florida up to Michigan. The prosecutor's office, instead of getting back to us in any way, decided to have a press conference. And as Ms. McDonald admitted, try to find a way to, uh, to surprise our clients and catch them off guard when it was so unnecessary. And last night and throughout the day, we were in contact with our clients. They, they were scared, they were terrified, they were not at home. They were figuring out what to do, getting finances in order. 
And the last text messages we had with them and phone calls Marielle Lehman and I had with them, our plan was to drive to the Novi District Court this morning because arraignments were supposed to start at 8.30 for any county arraignment. And we had plans to meet them at 7.30 to text the fugitive apprehension team to get to the court by 8.30 so they could be arraigned first thing. Those were plans we made and solidified, and we did not announce it because unlike the prosecution, we weren't attempting to make this a media, a media spectacle. This case is absolutely the saddest, most tragic, worst case imaginable. There is absolutely no doubt, but our clients were absolutely going to turn themselves in. It was just a matter of logistics and all the prosecution had to do was communicate with me about it. And we tried multiple times. Still with us, trial attorney Loray Carruth. Loray, so we just talked earlier about the reality of an insanity defense and that's an affirmative defense. So let's take this to the in conclusion. If in fact, Ethan Crumbly is successful in proving the affirmative defense of insanity, meaning not guilty by reason of insanity. How does that affect these charges against the parents, criminal charges that they are facing because of what their son did? Insane or not, um, he's still a teenager. And so I don't think it does, I don't think, um, that that does anything to uh, the the uh, the parents' case. He's still a teenager that whose brain hasn't developed yet fully, and so you know the the whole brain science around adolescence and things like that. And so, given how impulsive teenagers are, and you should not be buying your teenager a, a weapon because insane or not, you don't know what they're going to do with it. You know, if he wasn't insane, he could just think it was a cool game to go and and do what he did. And so I, I don't I don't think the son's successful defense would do anything to um, positively help or negatively hurt the parents' case. And and even with their flippant comments, you know, um, throughout about them purchasing the gun for their son, that's that's not going to help either. And Loray, you went right where I was going to go, which is the fact of the matter is allegedly they bought the gun for him and there were other red flags of him maybe needing mental health help or help of some kind that arguably they ignored. And that's why the state has charges against both of those parents currently.